What's good, my exotic family? It's your boy Dre. Welcome back to the channel. So today, in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about one of my favorite species of snakes, and that is blood pythons. As you guys know, I love my big boy Kato here. Um, and he's doing he's doing good, getting big. Just had a a fresh shed and a rat uh, last week, so we got him back out. And it's it's been a while. I think the last video I had with Kato and it was like seven months ago. So this video is going to be all about Kato today, but we're going to be talking about do blood pythons deserve the reputation they were given? So let's talk about it. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. So welcome back to the video. Like I said, we're going to be talking about if blood pythons deserve the reputation that they were given. And... I think once you think about a few different factors, a few different things, um, you, you can determine your answer. Of course, for me, it's going to be no, um, because personally, I don't feel really feel like any reptile or snake should be considered more aggressive over others because reptiles have, you know, a natural defense system. That's what they were created to do. Technically, when reptiles were put here hundreds of million years ago, I'm pretty sure they were never really meant to be domesticated or meant to be meant to be put into pets or made into pets for that. So. I think a lot of it is we place our own fear onto these animals when they don't act a certain way or do things as we would expect them to do. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about Kato, so that's kind of what prompted this video because that question always comes up and, you know, it's, is your blood python aggressive or are blood pythons really that bad? So like I said, let's talk about it. So personally me, um, I don't feel like blood pythons are going to be any different than any other snake. Um, they still need to be handled. They need to be habituated to you. And if you're not spending that time with them to build that bond, then yes, you are going to have somewhat of a nippy snake. But again, that's going to be any snake, whether it be blood python, carpet python, Burmese python, reticulated python, red tail boa, common boa, any type of boa. Um, I've, I've even <clears throat> even seen you know ball pythons that can be nippy. But again, it's going to just depend on you and nothing is going to happen overnight so you, you have to understand that you have to really spend time with these animals and again it may take someone three to four months for their reptile to calm down or it may, may take someone else you know six to eight months so it really just depends again Kato is four now and this is this is where we're at he's very very tolerable um, I can put him around my neck and I hold him and as you see he he doesn't do much of anything. He just kind of hangs out, does his thing. He'll explore, but we do not have any issues with any type of temperament or anything like that. Now, when I go to get him out of his enclosure, is he a little testy? Yes, sometimes they are very cage defensive. He doesn't strike. It's more of a hiss, which is why I use my handy dandy snake hook. I let him know that I am here to let I'm here to take him out. He is not being fed. Um, we, we either have to do maintenance or I'm pulling him out to be handled. So you have to <clears throat> you have to make sure that you are also again communicating with your snake and building that consistent bond. And the key word in that is being consistent because if you are not being consistent, your snake will never catch on to what you would like them to catch on to. As you guys can see, Kato is large now. He's a big boy and you see I can trust him around my neck. I have no issues. Um, Kato was the very first snake I got in this current reptile room and I'm super duper happy that I brought him home. Um, his personality is great, uh, very great disposition, great eater. So it does kind of bother me sometimes to see that these guys are given the reputation that they have. Um, any snake as a baby can and possibly will be defensive, but I feel like a real reptile keeper that's determined to work at it will understand that these guys aren't human babies you can't treat them as such you have to give them the respect that they that they deserve as, as animals these guys are snakes um no, no, and no matter what you still treat them like you know like a snake so of course the babies are going to be nippy uh, naturally they're defensive you know you hear a lot about rainbow boas green tree pythons blood pythons that they're these crazy death-eating machines as babies and that's not always the case has Kato ever bit me yes of course 
But again, it's gonna take some time, some repetition to get them habituated to you because again, it's not like training a puppy. You can't, hey, no, you have to literally spend time with them, get them used to you and let them know that you are no threat and you pose no harm to them. Once you have that done, then you can start building upon a relationship with these guys. And from there, it's literally no way but up. And as you can see, they make great tame, uh, you know, pet snakes. Give you guys a little close up here, Kato. As you can see, I put my hand right up to his face. There we go. And he, he's a beautiful snake. I have no, no problems with him biting. I, I don't ever fear that he's gonna come around and try to bite my hand or anything like that. And if I didn't trust the snake at all, then I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be pulling him out. But again, Kato's very friendly. He's a very good snake. And if you are debating on getting a blood python, I really hope that this video can give you some type of peace of mind and get you prepared for, you know, what you should be ready for. And then also, if you haven't, check out my things you should know before getting a blood python. I'll put a card up here so you guys can make sure you watch it. But other than that, these guys are great snakes, beautiful, intelligent snakes. Um, there's not a lot to, there's a lot to love about them, to be honest. They're personally, for me, I feel like they're low maintenance. Um, as long as you have their humidity and temperature requirements right, these guys do not like it super hot and they do need some of that humidity. They like it kind of, they're native to Malaysia and they, they live in like the Malaysian farmland swamps, the marshy area and they wait for food. Um, so they like it pretty humid and a lot of people get swampy confused with, you know, like wetness, like they make it muddy and that is not what these guys want. And if you do that continuously combined with heat, that's how you get bugs. So do your proper research to make sure that you can determine what's right for these guys. Um, I keep Kato here. Um, these guys, like I said, these guys do not like it super hot. So his heating pad is set to 99. And then there's bedding over it, of course, so that puts his warm spot right at like 85, which is perfect for these guys. And again, for some people that may be too warm, it's winter here in Ohio. The room they're in gets a little cooler down here. So as long as their temps are maintained in the enclosure, um, I don't have a problem. And it's not freezing cold down here. It's just cooler than what it normally would be. Um, so his uh, enclosure um, stays around like 85. Summertime, I usually scale it back to like 82, 83, and he does perfectly fine with that. I get full sheds. He has a huge water bowl that he can get into. And again, as long as your snake is happy, as long as your snake is healthy, and you know, I don't, I don't see any issues that you will have. But um, no, these guys are not death-eating machines. They're not super aggressive. Beautiful animals, beautiful snakes. And it's literally one of those snakes that I really feel like they deserve a lot more credit than what they are given because they're so cool. And to, to me, I feel like they're a little, they're an advanced version of ball pythons. Some people hate when I say that, but I mean, if you look at their body, they're similar to ball pythons. Ball pythons are probably a little more agile when it comes to climbing because these are literally this is literally a terrestrial snake yes they'll climb over things but it's not the snake that's going to actually try to climb a tree they're very clumsy um i've actually tried to let kato like climb a log and dude almost fell so i'm just like uh oh but like i said they will they do have enough um you know they can definitely like climb over stuff but climbing like through a tree or somewhere very high with these guys being a very heavy bodied snake not gonna happen um at least not without struggling so i'm not going to say that they're not going to climb because any snake will climb if given the opportunity however these guys are more so burrowing snakes um i mean and that's that's pretty much it so again um not bad snakes at all you guys know this is my favorite species of snake i've said that time and time again and i've been getting a lot of questions about this guy so I hope you guys, uh, there we go, get another close-up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's a little Kato there with some tongue flicks for you. And then just check out how pretty that pattern is. For those of you that don't know or are new to my channel, Kato is what you would call a matrix blood python, which is a morph within the blood python genetics. Um, he's about four years old. He is a big boy. I got him at eight months old, and he's been with me for the last four years. They make great, amazing pet snakes, and again as long as you do your research you take care of them properly you have their husband proper you won't have any issues and then never be afraid to use a snake hook it can take some time 
and the advice that I'm giving right now goes for any snake but I'm mentioning it because this is a snake that I will say you're gonna want to work with them more than you would most snakes because they can be defensive but again they are not man-eating machines so with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about the pythons down in the comments. I enjoy the comments that you guys have been leaving. I really appreciate all of the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, follow me on Instagram at DWExotics. And if you like the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And as always, stay exotic.